So we were having a look at this. I, I think it's page 440 if I remember right. So we're going to do this a couple different ways. We have a look at that. The uh, first way is what I call the more standard way, the way that you know I always use, um, I always think about using first. So what I want to do in that this method is you want to figure out what point you're going to start with to take moments about, and that would be point A. Okay, once I make that decision, I want a dimension from A to the, where the forces are. Okay, that weight is 1.2 meters measured along the center axis of that uh, shaft that's being held there, and that's at a 20 degree angle. So what I've got there for that shaft from A to B is 3 meters, and from A to the center of gravity is 1.2. So I've got a 20 degree angle there. And then I go cosine 20 times 1.2 and cosine 20 times 3 to get those two horizontal dimensions. Because the standard method that I would use on this stuff is to find X and Y dimensions from the point about which I'm taking moments to the forces that cause the moments. Okay. So I've got that and I'm going to go cosine 20 times 1.2 and that gets me 1.13. That gets me from A to where that weight is at the center of gravity. And then I go cosine 20 times 3 and that gets me the horizontal distance from A to where that uh, cable is at B. Now when I measure the angle of the cable with the horizontal, it makes a 42 degree angle up left there. I got that because I know the 48 right there, 90 minus 48 gets me 42. That's the direction of that cable force. Now that's at an angle, so I need an X moment arm, which is cosine 20 times 3, that's 2.82. But I also need a Y moment arm because I have an angled force there. So I need both of those moment arms to run my moment about A. So 3 meters times sine 20 gets me 1.03. Okay. So now I've got that thing dimensioned up and ready to go. So we're doing all right with that. Okay. okay, once I've got that, I just run moments about A. So why don't you take uh, two or three minutes and do a moment about A equation on that. See if you can kind of get that. It should be all dimensioned up and ready to go so you can do it. So how about a sum of moments about A equation? Our goal here is to find the tension at B. Sometimes instead of using an R for reaction, they use a T for cables because they are tension. Okay, so that's TB, tension in B. Sum of A equation. So remember, you, what you do, you take the X moment arms and the Y forces and the Y moment arms and the X forces and you combine them to get moments. So to get a moment, you combine unlike forces and distances. So X force Y distance or Y, um, y force X distance. That gets you that action like you get on a wrench when they're at opposite directions perpendicular to one another. Okay, so that's what we want to do is combine those things and then look at the direction of rotation and that gets you the sign. That's how you want to approach it. stuff into one moment equation about A, and that'll get you the tension in B.
So the sum of ma is zero. You're going to have three terms, I think. One of them, just to get you going, will be cosine 42 times the tension in B. That'll get you the x component, which is that one, adjacent to the angle, x force y moment arc. 1.03 meters. There's one of them. That's going to go counterclockwise, so it's positive. And there's two other terms. It's hard for me to see because is it only an X component? So. For that, well, there's, two, there's a Y component. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to visualize how uh, something would push against it. But it's, it's an odd. That's what drives it. I mean, that's trying to make it go this way so the cable pulls it back. I mean, that's basically what's going on. Yeah. So three terms total is what you want there. Clockwise negative, counterclockwise positive. Kind of what's going on with this thing is that weight is trying to make this thing rotate clockwise and the cable's going to pull it back the other direction and those two things are going to balance. I mean, that, that's what's happening about A. So what do we got there? We got 240 Newtons. It's a y force times 1.13 meters, which is an x distance, and that's clockwise, so that's a negative. And then pulling back the other way, what we got is we've got um, sine 42 on the opposite side times 2.28, sine 42 times the tension in B times the 2.28 meter moment arm. That's coming around counterclockwise, so that gets a positive. Okay, that's that one. And then we've got the one we just looked at, this one here. Cosine 42 times TB times 1.03. So you can work your way through that and get TB as 102 newtons. Okay. So we're doing all right with that. Any questions on that? Yeah, question here. Uh, when did the units uh, cancel out the three cable distance? 
or how do, how do the units cancel out? Yeah. Okay. The um, all right. I um, let's see. All right. Now the units. I, I I don't know if I'm being super like rigorous on them. If you know what I mean. I mean, what's going on here? That's a force and a distance, Newton meters. The TB has a unit of newtons in it, and then the distance is in meters. So that's a newton meter. As, and that happens again here. So I know everything's a newton meter. So on that top line, I'm pretty confident the units are going to work. Okay. Now, when I work through it, when I multiply 240 times 1.13, that's obviously a newton meter. The 1.89 comes from the sine 42 times the 2.82. There is kind of an implicit meter in there. And then the TV has a newton in it. I'm getting, I guess I'm getting a little sloppy, but that top line kind of has newton meters in it. And once I've got that, I'm, I'm you know, I don't like carrying units and variables at the same time because it gets a little hard to track for me. So as long as that top line's good, I'm feeling okay about it. Okay. And and I guess the meters are kind of implicitly with the coefficients out in front of TB. It's really where the meters, that's where they're really at. Okay. All right. Other questions on this? I'm doing all right. Doing okay. All right. All right, so that'll get you the TB, the force in the cable. Now, once you've done that one moment, moment equation, the rest are generally force equations. So once you got that, you just go sum of FX and sum of FY, and that'll get you REX and REY. Okay. So FX is REX minus cosine 42102. So REX is 76 to the right. Sum of FY. Is REY up minus the 240 plus the sine 42 times the 102. So you can solve for REY, it's 172 up. So the total force on the pin, again, it kind of depends on how the connection's made. But if it's a simple, very simple connection, the force on the pin would be the square, square root of some of the squares, 188. So that's how I would finish that off using a standard XY approach on that thing. Got any uh, any questions on that? Yeah. Why don't you have to account for the twenty degrees of the bar coming up for the X and Y directions? Um. The direction of the bar doesn't affect the directions of the forces directly. Okay. I'm drawing it up that way, and the bar direction doesn't enter into it. It's just the way I've got the forces pointing. Okay. Now, I could, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at forces that might actually make a little bit more sense. We're going to look at them like this next, which might be a little, might actually makes more sense to me to do it that way. But the first time through, I want to just do the standard approach. So that's how I did it. Now maybe the next run through this what we do will make a little bit more sense in that angle sort of way. Right. Okay. Other questions on that? Okay. All right. Now this is the kind of the standard drill. This is how I do these problems. But there's another way you can do these too if it works to your advantage. And I think it will on this one. I'm going to stay on the same page. I'm just going to do the same problem a different way. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use inclined axes. And the reason I'm going to do that is all my dimensioning is set up that way. Okay. So what I can do is I can set up a set of axes like this. And that's another way to solve that problem. Now this might work a little bit more readily because you're given the uh, dimensions to G from A and then further down the way to the end of the bar. It's three meters long, so it's 1.2 from A to G and then three from A to B. So that leaves 1.8 for that extra little distance there, okay? Now, uh, so you could set it up with inclined axes. Now, if you do that, um, what you're going to have to do is you got to do a little bit more work with the angles you got to figure out that this angle between the cable and the and the center line of the bar is 62 degrees. 
And you also have to know that being as that weight is going straight down, and we've already turned the bar up at 20 degrees, basically what we've got going on there is that's 20 right there. If the weight goes straight down, that would be a 90, so that's going to leave 70 right there. So that angle is 70. So this inclined axis approach can get you to quicker and easier solutions, but you do often have to do a little bit more work doing visualization and looking at the angles. So that's kind of the price you pay to do this approach, is you got to do a little bit more with the angles. Doing the math too, wouldn't the uh, weight have an x portion and a y portion? I'm showing that the weight goes straight down. So it, I'm just going to keep it that way. Now you're right. I mean, you could look at the component of the weight doing that and the component of the weight doing that. And we will do that with the 70 degree angle. I'm not showing it yet, but I will do that. Yeah. I'm not going to worry too much about that x component, at least for my moment equation, because it goes right through A. All right. All right. Okay, so instead of a three-term moment equation and having to do all the trig on the dimensions, if I can figure out those two angles, the 70 and the 62, I got a fairly straightforward moment equation there. So I'm going to go sum of ma is 0, and it's going to be sine 70. That will get me the opposite component of this weight right there. It's this one times 1.2 meters times 240 newtons. So I'm going sine 70 times 240 to get this component. And then I just multiply it by that moment arm I've already got, 1.2. And then again, I'll do the opposite side of this for this tension force. So that'll be sine 62 times TB times 3 meters. So a little bit easier setup on the moment equation for this. Okay. And that gets me to the same tension, of course. You know, it is what it is. So you could do it either way. It's just, just an alternate way of working through some of these problems. When you've got stuff on ramps and inclines and all that, this can be an easier way to do it. You do have to be able to figure out angles, though, sometimes when you use this approach. Questions on that? Okay. All right, now you can go back then and find, um, find the forces at A. Now you can either use the inclined axes or not. You can do whatever you want to find those two forces. Now I've got them set up for inclined axes, so that's how I'll do it Okay, when I finish this thing up. So I'll go sum of fx prime and sum of fy prime to find those two forces on the pin at A. Okay. If I do that, I get different answers, of course. I get Rex prime is 130. And Ray prime is 135. Those are different than the Rax and the Ray that I got on the previous run through this. However, when you do the square root of sum of the squares, you get the same answer. The force in the pin is what it is. It's 188. Now, what the components are depends on what angle you're looking at the components on. So I went ahead and found the inclined x prime and y prime forces. I could have just found the straight x and y forces to it I want it on the pan. It just depends what you want and how you want to approach it. But the point I'll make here is that this little bit here is the same for both a and x and, excuse me, x and y and x prime and y prime. Okay. So we doing all right with that? Okay. 
So that's two approaches to the same problem. They both have kind of advantages and disadvantages. So you just want to go with whatever approach is going to work best for you, know, for you, for your own approach, how you like to do things and whatever the situation is, okay? All right. So that's one little thing you can run into on these. The other little thing you can run into is on the next page. So let's have a look at it, okay? Distributed load reactions. Okay, there's a, a, a spillway and a dam there. And what's going to happen here when you get, uh, when you back up water like this, is you get the force of the water starts pushing on the dam. Okay, so you're going to get kind of a distributed load like that pushing. And there's different ways to analyze these. And keep in mind that, again, we model things. We don't have perfect analyses of things, right? We just model them as best we can. And we go with it, okay? And we design stuff. Okay, now one way to look at this, to analyze it, is to consider that little cutoff wall there. They call it to be a pin joint. You're applying that water force, so you're trying to roll that dam around like this. And what the soil is going to do is push back. But the soil force pushing back will be greater at the far right than it will be where it's rotating about. That is a way to model that. And I've designed these things and done it that way, okay? So what you're looking at is the ability of the soil to hold up the distributed load on the right side. Can it handle that much compression? That's what you look at, okay? So that's one way to do that. So what you're doing now, you have a distributed load in the reaction. In, it's in the applied load with the water force, but it's also in how the soil reacts. So sometimes we have to deal with these distributed loads in the reaction. So let's have a look at 442. And let's have a boat going in the water, and we're going to have a motor and a person in the back of the boat. And let's see what we can do with that. We're going to assume then that the boat is going to tip back because of all the weight in the back, so that there will be a greater force of the water pushing back in the right-hand side of the boat than on the left. So we're going to assume that we have a trapezoidal uh, reaction, basically, there. Okay? So this is on 442. That's where it's at. Okay. So we good with that? So let's see how we can handle that. We're going to assume a trapezoidal reaction. All right, now, if that's the case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that trapezoidal load, just like what I've done before. I'm going to cut it up into pieces because I can't handle a trapezoid very well. It's hard to find the centroid. It's kind of an involved formula. It's just easier, in my mind, just to break it into a rectangle and a triangle. So I'm going to break it up into those two shapes. So the distance from A to the centroid of the rectangle will be half of the length of the boat. The boat's 2.4, so that'll be 1.2 meters. Okay. And then the distance from A to the centroid of the triangular load, which sits underneath the rectangular load, will be two-thirds times... Um, 2.4, because I'm starting from the vertex of a right triangle, and that ought to be about 1.6, so that's this dimension here. Now I need to define what the distributed loads are on the left and right of that trapezoid, so it looks like I went with uh, P1 and P2. Okay, so there's P1 here and P2 there. So I need to find the... Um, values associated with that, the areas of the triangle and the rectangle. I've got the weight of the boat is 2,400 newtons. At, that'll go at G for the boat. And the weight of the person and the motor is 900 newtons. And that goes at the G for the motor and the person. So I'm going to find the reaction for the rectangle and the reaction for the triangle. The height on the left of that shape is P1, so the area of the rectangle is 2.4 times P1, and that's at 1.2 meters from A. The area of the triangle then, I've got P1 on the left, P2 on the right, 
I've got a shape like that. I got P1 here. I've got P2 here. I'll do that. That'll be P1. This will be P2 minus P1 right there for the height of that triangle. So that's one half times the base of 2.4 times the height, which is P2 minus P1. So when I multiply that through, I get one half times 2.4. That's 1.2 P2 minus 1.2 P1. And that's at 1.6 meters from A. Okay. So I've got that broken up into a triangle and a rectangle, and now I've got the areas of them. The variables are over on the sides, P1 and P2. That's what I want to solve for. Okay. Now, it's a bit of algebra in this, but really the, the statics part is just solving for uh, some of f y is zero and some of m a is zero. So I just went ahead and do that, did that, and I put all the algebra on your paper for you. So it's just a matter of coming up with these two equations. All right. So sum of f y is the two weights, 2400 and 900 down, plus the reaction up, which is 2.4 p1 plus 1.2 p1 minus one, or excuse me, plus 1.2 p2 minus 1.2 p1. And I can go ahead and work through that and collect terms. And I might even put that on there for you, but maybe I didn't. I'm not sure. I guess I didn't. Okay. So zero then is the sum of 2,400 and 900 negative. So it's negative 3,300 plus 1.2 P1 plus 1.2 P2. I bring the, I leave the 1.2 P1 on one side of the equation, put all the other stuff on the other side, and divide through by 1.2. And that gets me an expression for P1. 2750 minus P2. Okay, so that gets me a nice little substitution when I go sum of Fy is zero. And then after I've done that, I can get some moments about A. And I'll have that substitution ready to plug into this. So what I got going on here is two equations and two unknowns. So we're doing all right with that. We need a moment equation now. We're going to start at A and kind of work our way across. We've got the two applied forces and the two unknowns pushing back. So we're going to have a four-term moment equation. And that's going to look like that. So we got 2,400 times 1 1.2 is negative. 900 times 2.4 is negative also. They're both clockwise. Those are the applied forces, the weight of the boat and the weight of the person in the motor. And then pushing back, I've got um, the uh, rectangular reaction, 2.4 P1 times its moment arm, 1.2. And the triangular reaction, 1.2 P2 minus 1.2 P1 times its moment arm of 1.6. And then I just work out the rest of the algebra there for you. You can get the two sides of the trapezoid. Okay, so we're going to have P1 is 250 and P2 is 2,500. Okay, so as that boat kind of rocks back, you get more of a reaction on the back side, on the right side, than you do on the left. I'll cover these tomorrow, but I'll make them do Thursday. I got a bunch of grading to go through anyway, so I'll just make it do Thursday. Um, now, we also I handed out uh, for those for the people with the old versions of the book. I handed out new copies of problems 271, 2, and 3. Was anybody not here on Friday that needs this? It's if you don't have yeah. the B version of the book. If you got the older version? Yeah, I do. Thank you. So, this is those three problems that we have. So this don't need to be started